Hello students, good evening. Am I audible? Can you hear me? Hello, good evening. Great to see response from all of you. Please join fast. Hope you have got the link shared among your friends. Please do that fast. Let everybody join. And uh, Good evening, good evening, Ankit, Mohit, Asif, nice to see you all. Let's wait for a few minutes. The time for live I have given us 8.30 uh, and I have also told you that I would be sharing the link by 8.20 825 like that so it's already shared we'll wait for all other students to join with the link Good evening, Jat Lakshmi. Ashi, good evening. Rishti, good evening. Parthiv, good evening. Good to see you all. As I told you, keep your textbooks ready and your, uh, you can keep also a notebook for taking down some points quickly from the revision I'm going to do. This is for your session ending examination. A uh, lot many students have requested me to do a quick revision because uh, some of them are very much tensed about how to approach the paper. So I'll give you some quick tips and also a, a fast run through the question pattern. So you will have a very clear focus, like these are the areas you need to work on. Okay, so just wait for uh, four to five minutes. We need to have more students here. I can see that some of them have just got the link. How are you all? Good. Okay, Asif. Sanya, good evening. Okay. Christy, Lakshmi, Sanya, Asif. Sejal, hello Sejal, good evening. Good to see you, sir. Namaste, sir. Very happy to see Vice Principal, sir, also joining the live. That's a really a great gesture of uh, motivation for all of us. Thank you very much, sir. Great to see you here. We are going to start in another three minutes. I'm expecting more students to join now and uh, you can also uh, type your uh, doubts and questions before we start the live so i can also address your queries you uh, know during my uh, revision so if you have anything like that thank you sir for your genuine and uh, kind words of motivation Thank you. 
please be with us sir if you are free on the live session as all of us know that sir has uh, uh, walked into most of our classrooms giving uh, motivational tips to you pep talks to all the students so we are very happy to see him here so once again welcome to you asif uh, sure dear uh, quantum theory okay that part oh, that's from the lesson <laughs> the adventure okay uh, dear students i won't be um, going into each and every aspect of uh, our uh, lessons here because that would be taking a lot of time and i want you to have a general idea just a, a rough idea about which are the areas you must concentrate and also uh, how to approach the paper because see we cannot say that only for board classes we need to have this kind of uh, uh, you know revision session no for all the classes right for uh, class 11th also it is quite crucial and we want that most of your uh, performance should be uh, remarkable excellent in the exams Good evening, Shikho. Okay. We just have one more minute remaining to start the live. I hope uh, everyone is listening to me here. I'm audible. I hope uh, if you have any suggestions and queries and corrections, uh, please suggest here. Hello, Sajal. Good evening. Good evening, Shalu. Okay. See, most of these students know uh, that I have been sharing lots of uh, simple tips in the group as well as in the classroom. So I thought let it be of uh, benefit to everyone, irrespective of the sections that um, I teach or the you know schools that we work. You know, let. all our children be benefited for the examination and um, of course uh, it's very nice to see kv his students here okay that is uh 8:30 now and we are going to start the revision for session ending examination class 11th english okay so first of all dear students our question paper pattern i mean the blueprint for your uh, session ending examination this is what we are going to discuss uh, first and then we'll go into the syllabus discussion okay so all of you please note down those who have already done it you have an idea about the question pattern fine but still you can have this um, revision reading section a section a karthik good evening reading section carries 26 marks 26 marks how is that uh, distributed you have hello karthik nice to see you all the way from goa lovely Uh, we have a passage which carries uh, 10 marks unseen passage and then we have a second unseen passage that's for 8 marks and the third passage that you have in section a is for note making that carries 8 marks so 10 marks passage again a an 8 marks passage these both are unseen passages for comprehension and third one is again an unseen passage but that is for note making it carries 8 marks so 10 plus 8 plus 8 26 marks that is what your section a is like okay coming to section b the total marks for the section is 23 marks 23 marks 
section B. And the questions are, you have grammar questions for seven marks. It's not a single question. There are many topics of grammar covered, like how to use tense in the correct form. And I mean, the verbs given in brackets. How do you complete a sentence with a proper uh, close? Okay, and uh, jumbled sentences, all these kinds of topics, uh, you can basic grammar topics you can be prepared with. Good evening, Karthik. Nice to see you here. I'm good. Hope you're fine. So seven marks grammar. Then we have classified advertisements. Classified advertisements. I hope you all know. Those who know, you can start typing here. Which are the classified ads we have? How many we have? Tell me. Come on, quick. And which are they? These are short compositions. You can easily score good marks. Just prepare the steps to writing each type of ad. And before that, when you read the question in the examination, the first task for you is to identify the kind of classified ad it is. That's the first challenge. For example, if a person is looking for a job, he or she has got the requisite qualifications and is looking for a job and wants to publish an advertisement in the newspaper. What is that ad titled? It would be situation wanted, not vacant. It would be situation wanted because you want a job. Situation means job there. That's how you can understand. If an employer, that's like an organization or an institution or a company, if they are giving an advertisement, they are looking for some candidates to fill certain vacancies. That case, it would be situation vacant. Please don't have any confusion. A person who is looking for a job, situation wanted. A company who is looking for candidates and ready to give job, situation vacant okay so this is the uh, this is how you should get the concept of situation uh, vacant and wanted ads yes travels and tours we have for sale you have to let and accommodation wanted situation uh, we can uh, that we have already discussed yes lost and found we have then we also have educational arman good evening nice to see you and um, <laughs> Ram Ram and um, matrimonial is usually not asked in the exam okay yeah that's also a classified ad then we have educational we also have uh, missing pets or persons okay so these are the types of ads that we need to study it has been taught in detail by your teachers um, I have discussed it in detail in the classroom uh, Samit, uh, Sanmeet, okay, good evening. So this is what I need to talk about classified ads. Classified ad carries three marks. Please remember, if you write the ad correct, you are going to get full three marks. Yes, property selling is for sale, okay? Don't confuse between for sale and to let. To let is when you give a property for rent. Okay, you have a flat and you want to give it on rent. That would be to let you have a, a flat you are selling it or you have a house you want to sell it then it would be for sale very simple look at the word itself okay do not confuse it you are looking for a house on rent or a room on rent you want to use it for a residential purpose or commercial purpose whatever it is that time you will write it as accommodation wanted Okay, or room wanted in some cases, but accommodation wanted would be fine. Next, we have uh, poster making that carries three marks. Poster making. The easiest way to understand poster is, just remember this, I used to give my students this formula in the classroom. Poster is text and visual. You have 
lines and text you also have some illustrations or some pictures or visuals which complement the text okay like you have to prepare a poster for um, independence day what kind of uh, content you will um, you know present in the box uh, you can use some catchy lines in uh, hindi also yes but the major text should be in english okay and another important thing is poster should have a mention of the issuing authority who is issuing this poster so that can come at the bottom you can write issued by maybe a club or maybe a school okay that should be mentioned at the bottom it has to be put in a box classified and poster they must be put in box don't forget to do that so poster making carries again 3 marks next we have speech writing how do you write a speech that carries 5 marks speech please remember this go for a three paragraphs formula very easy the first para you address the audience introduce the topic and uh, start the speech with a very beautiful quotation or reference to an incident or an event the beginning of your speech should create interest in the reader do not start with flat statements please remember this much second paragraph you give maximum important value points for the topic given in the speech question okay maximum points should be there suppose it's a problem a social problem you are writing about or you are speaking about please give some examples to show how serious that issue is and the most important part is solutions to the problem what solutions do you have for the problem that you have highlighted and please remember to write four to five minimum solutions to the problem in the speech okay that's the topic and then third paragraph you can conclude by giving a motivational message or a quote okay so this way you can do a speech very well but if you do not have this kind of a planning you will end up writing just random thoughts and points and you may not get good marks there so please have a proper planning three paragraphs first para what you should do second para third para like this each para's plan i have already told you so speech as i told you carries five marks you should get full five marks with beautiful language and excellent points next important question so i told you grammar then classified ad poster speech writing then the final question in section b is debate writing yeah here again even though we have discussed it many times uh, in the classrooms and in you know various materials you find information shared some children still have doubts how do i start a debate how do i proceed etc see very simple a debate will always have two perspectives minimum okay about something a topic is given there will be some who will be speaking against the topic and there would be some who would support or they will speak in favor of the topic so are you for the topic are you against the topic this you decide first reading the question the topic given in the question read it and see whether you are for it or against it if you are for it all the points that you are writing in the debate should support your view or opinion yeah shiku you can uh, change uh, paragraphs in speech no problem that is why i said uh, three paragraphs okay now debate how do we write start again go for three paragraph format first para you give an introduction and mention the topic given for debate address the audience give the topic what is the topic given for debate and mention there itself in the first paragraph whether you are in favor or against the topic this much you do in first paragraph now comes the most important part in debate writing in second paragraph i want you to give four to five 
minimum or maximum, let us say, four to five important arguments. Remember this. Important arguments to support your stand. Suppose you said the topic is, for example, um, you know, let's say um, outdoor games have almost uh, or uh, children have almost lost interest in outdoor games. They prefer video games, something like this. If a topic comes for examination and you are saying, no, no, out, out, outdoor games are still significant. And you want to prove this by some arguments. What are your important arguments? This is what you should decide in debate. Before you start writing debate, Please prepare four to five strong reasons for taking this stand. Those reasons I call as arguments. So number one, you write one argument, explain it in few uh, sentences with some examples. Second uh, argument, right? Underline it, explain it briefly. Like this three to four or four to five important arguments if you write and then last paragraph you conclude once again repeating your standpoint so for these reasons i am against the topic or i am in favor of the topic like this you can conclude then format you know already okay for speech and debate format you can easily uh, learn from the materials from uh, the lessons i mean notes the teacher uh, teachers have given but i am talking about the content now here, okay? So I hope uh, debate is clear to all of you. Debate, yes. Any doubt regarding section B? Any questions? Quickly write your comments here and your doubts here. We'll straight away come to literature. Remember, literature carries 31 marks. 31 marks. So total paper is 80 marks. Section A26, Section B23, and uh, Literature, thank you, uh, 31. So this is how the paper is uh, divided, okay? Now we come to Literature. Literature, you have extract from poetry, extract from prose lessons, short answer type from both textbooks, and long answer type questions from both textbooks. Please have an idea. This is what you are supposed to be prepared with. Your long answer questions carry six marks. There are two questions, six marks each. One from Hornbill and the other one from Snapshots. Okay, so that's where we come to um, the discussion of question pattern. Now we are going to discuss important topics from each lesson. That is what most of you would be waiting for. What are the topics I should study uh, each lesson? Which kind of, uh, what kind of questions can come? Which are the topics I need to study, etc. Okay. So let us start with um, our uh, supplementary reader first, snapshots. And then we'll come to Hornbill, our uh, main uh, textbook okay in supplementary reader the very first lesson is the summer of the beautiful white horse i'm going to give you all the important areas if you prepare these plus all the points your teachers have taught you important uh, questions that you have practiced or answered in the previous examinations like half yearly periodic test etc all this you have to study okay I'm just giving you some add-ons. Don't think these topics are the A to Z of your preparation. Okay. These are just simple uh, signals and triggers for you. Okay. So coming to our uh, summer of the beautiful white horse. As you know, that chapter is about the transformation the horse, the white horse underwent after it was taken for a ride by Morad and Aram. 
the cousins, their cousins. They had enjoyed the ride. Not only that, they gave the horse a beautiful time of its life. Okay, so that is why the title of the lesson is the first point you should learn. Please note down. Why is the lesson titled The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse? That explanation you should have. I told you why. Because it was the most beautiful season or time in the life of the horse when it was taken for a ride in the early morning by Morad and Aram. The next topic you need to study from Summer of the Beautiful White Horses, character sketch, most important. These are the characters, Morad, Aram, Uncle Khosrow, very important character. And the farmer, John Barrow. Morad, Aram, Uncle Khosrow and John Barrow, four important characters. Please remember when you are preparing, for each character, you should have four, minimum four qualities that you identify. Some words to describe the character and then explain that quality with an example from the lesson. This is the way you should write character sketch. Okay, for example, you are saying uh, Morad. Okay. Morad is a person who, um, you can say, he is a free bird or he enjoys life to the fullest. This is one trait in his character. Underline this, explain why. What are one or two reasons from the text for you to support your statement? Next important topic from Summer of the Beautiful White Horses. What makes the story interesting? This could be asked for a long answer question. What are the points you would say that make this story a very interesting reading experience? Third one is extract questions from the lesson. I told you, you get extract questions from poems and prose lessons. So I don't want to repeat this. All the lessons be prepared with extract questions. That means identify the most important lines in the text and uh, word meanings. Suppose you find uh, an unfamiliar word used in that extract, be ready with that. Okay. So title, character sketch, what makes the story interesting, extract questions. Next point is Garuglanian family. The family to which these children belong. What are the specialities of that uh, family or that tribe? That's also given in the text. Identify the points. When you write the character sketch of Morat, there is one line that he keeps repeating. He slightly modifies it according to situations. That is, I have a way with. He always says that. I have a way with horses, he says. So when the farmer is coming, he says, yeah, I have a way with farmers. When the dogs bark and chase them, he tells uh, Aram, relax, I have a way with dogs. Says, okay. That is the style um, his personality has. Whereas Uncle Khusrow also has got another stock phrase that he keeps repeating. That is, it's no harm, pay no attention to it, he says. However complicated and uh, stressful a situation is, Uncle Khusrov remains cool as a cucumber and he says, it's no harm, pay no attention to it. So these are important lines you should remember when you write character sketch. Okay. So that's all about the lesson, the summer of the beautiful white horse. Yeah, one more point I missed there is, I told you the importance of the title. Related to that, they could ask one more question. What was the change in the horse that John Bayro saw after it was returned? Very important question. Please don't forget this. You will find it on the last page or towards the end, ending 
portion or part of the story where uh, John Bayro is very happy to see these, these changes in the horse. What are those changes? Identify how many points are there in the text, make a list of them, learn this. Okay. And Morad's philosophy, when you write his character, about his character or his character, you will find um, there is a line where he keeps uh, saying that stealing a horse is a different thing. I'm not stealing it. I'm just using it for a uh, ride. So that's also important in his character. Okay. Coming to next lesson, the address. The address is one of the most beautifully written lessons in the text. A true uh, literary piece, you can say. It is uh, written in the non-linear fashion. You find it starting uh, somewhere and then it goes to the past, comes to the present, again goes to the past. So it's so beautifully interwoven with the... Uh, events and details from the present and past that shows the mastery of the writer on her craft. Uh, there is a question I got from Shikhu. The horse became healthier, stronger and better tempered. Excellent. That's the point. The change that John Byro saw in the horse. Um, Shikhu has written here that is the horse became healthier, stronger and better tempered. Excellent. Hello. Good evening. Siddhartha, I think. So now, address. Important points in address. Please take a note. First one, character sketch of Mrs. S. That is the mother of the narrator. Second, character sketch of the narrator. Third, character sketch of Mrs. Darling. The lady at the address. And Mrs. Darling's daughter. There could be some, uh, you know, questions or reference made about the daughter of Mrs. Darling. Okay, so you should not miss her character, uh, traits of her character or points for her character. Second important point, and this is a major uh, question from the textbook on the address. The two visits paid by the narrator to the address. What happened on each visit. What happened on each visit? That's a very important question you can expect. And you should know on the very first visit, what happened. Second visit, what happened at Mrs. Darling's house. Extract questions. There is a great scope for extract questions from the address because most of the paragraphs and, uh, you know, uh, pages you will find in the text very intelligent, witty and uh, deep, uh, you know, statements made by the narrator. Okay. She's basically sharing her thoughts and uh, emotions with us. So some of the lines are highly uh, philosophical and metaphorical. So identify them and uh, write. One of which is the last line of the story where she says, of all the things I have to forget, this would be the easiest. Okay, Vikram, good evening. So, why she decides to forget the address? Next important topic. Why did the narrator decide to forget the address? What are the reasons? Hello, Rajesh, sir. Nice to see you. Why did she decide to forget the address? Dear students, please do not write answers based on assumptions. Please be true to the text. Read the lesson. You will find the exact reasons given in the textbook. You need to write that in the exam. Only then you can expect good marks. Then you should also have clear idea about the historical context of the lesson, the address. When did this happen? This is happening during the Holocaust. And the time of the liberation. Okay, after the Holocaust, how these um, Jewish people were released from the concentration camp. That period is called as the liberation. And it is mentioned in the textbook at uh, one point in the story where <clears throat> liberation, the letter is written in capitals. 
And who is the writer? Marga Minko. Summer of the Beautiful White Horse, who is the writer? William Saroyan. So you should learn all the uh, you know, titles of each lesson and the names of the writers. This will also help you identify a lesson in case the title of the lesson is not mentioned, but the author is mentioned in the question. Okay, You shouldn't lose marks for all this. Uh, another important question from the address is, why didn't the narrator visit the address soon after the liberation? Very important question, quite often overlooked by students. They would concentrate on reasons to forget the address, but this comes before that. You will find in the text very clearly given, the reasons are given one after the other. Why didn't she go to the address immediately after liberation? Because she was living in a, a rented room, a small rented room after liberation. She didn't go to the address of Mrs. Dowling immediately. Why? There are some reasons given. Please find it out from the text. Another important point in the lesson, the address is, when she enters Mrs. Dorling's house during her second visit, she says, for a moment, I felt I was in my own house. Then I realized, no. Why? That part is a very touching uh, and a true literary uh, piece. You will find that part of the lesson is excellent in its uh, narration and the way it conveys the emotions and thoughts of the narrator. Don't miss that part. Next important part of the lesson, the conversation between, the conversation between Mrs. S's daughter, that's the narrator, and Mrs. Dorling's daughter. What did they talk when she paid uh, a visit to that address the second time? So these are areas all of you should be uh, giving special attention to while preparing for the exam. Okay, so that's with the address. And uh, then we have um, the next lesson we have is, can somebody tell me which is the next lesson from snapshots? Let me get some responses. Summer of the beautiful white horse, the address, then quick. Mother's Day, correct. We have Mother's Day. Mother's Day again is a quite important uh, chapter because it is a drama. It's a play. It is not a short story like the address. It is um, a play. And here, the first important topic is character sketch of all the characters in the play. Please remember this. You can't exclude even a single character there. Even if they have very uh, less role to play, but they are important. So that means Pearson's family and uh, Fitzgerald's family. Uh, there's a question. So would there be any change in narrator's life if she wouldn't have visited at the first place? Mm. We can't say that. That's a very interesting question. Um, it's a hypothetical situation at the same time. We can't say, you know, whether it, there would have been a change in her life or not. Not. But the thing is, see, she was not interested in visiting that address soon after she came out from the concentration camps or soon after the liberation because she wasn't feeling good about life, you know, or running after those things which happened in the past, you know, and that's it. But it's a good question, yeah. So Mother's Day, all the important characters, Pearson's family, uh, Mrs. Annie Pearson, George Pearson, uh, Cyril and Doris, and the neighbor, Mrs. Fitzgerald. George Pearson, that is Mr. Pearson or Annie Pearson's husband. So these characters are important. And important dialogues in the play. I remember 
sharing a list of them in the class. Important dialogues of each character. Please do not overlook this because in Mother's Day, extract questions would be based on dialogues. So please be ready with this. Hello, Piyush. Yeah. Okay. Mother's Day. Next important topic in Mother's Day is uh, the message in the play. Very important, no doubt. What is the social relevance of that lesson or what is the message given in the lesson? The social message. Okay, so this is all about Mother's Day. And coming to the next one, tell me which is the next lesson, quick. After Mother's Day. After Mother's Day, which is the next lesson? Birth. Yes, Diksha, correct. Birth is one of the most inspiring stories in the textbook uh, about um, a medical crisis that the doctor faced and how he used the best of his uh, practical intelligence and his, uh, uh, you can say, presence of mind and saved the life of the mother and the baby. Okay. So, Dr. Andrew Manson, very important character, and the Morgan family, important. Who is the writer? Yes, Kushbu, correct, birth. The writer is A.J. Cronin. And from which novel of A.J. Cronin this lesson is taken from? The Citadel. This also you should know because you will have a clear idea about uh, where uh, this extract has been taken from. I mean, this lesson. So birth, when you study, one of the things is very important. Andrew's thoughts about marriage. That's a very important question. Andrew's thoughts about marriage. That happens in the very beginning of the story after he had a very disturbing or uh, uh, you know, unhappy evening with uh, Christine. Then there is a whole paragraph where he expresses his concern with us. Uh, and his anxiety about marriage. That's a very important part of the lesson. And then the most important part is how did Dr. Andrew save the mother and the child? This cannot be answered in one line. So you need to know step by step. Please make in serial number order in your notebook what he did first, second, what he did third, all the important steps he followed, finally saved the child and mother. But when you write in the exam, you can write it in running paragraphs or lines, but better you learn it in points. Christine is, uh, Vikram, Christine is uh, Andrew's girlfriend. And then at the end of the story, why does Andrew say that, oh God, I have done something at last. I have done something real, he says. Why? What does he mean by it? Okay. The last uh, moment of Andrew is important. Yeah, correct. The last part of the lesson where he makes this statement. Okay. He's very happy that I have, he has done something real in life. And why is the lesson titled birth? If you can give some tips and um, reasons, why the lesson is titled birth. Whose birth it is? Is it just the physical birth of the child? Starting from there, can you go to higher levels of meaning there? Please identify in your close and precise and deeper reading of the text. Okay, so that's about birth lesson. So snapshots, we have covered all the lessons for your final exam. Supplementary reader. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Miss you all very much. Ah, excellent. Piyush, uh, that's a beautiful point you have um, mentioned there. 
it is the birth of andrew it's a new birth for andrew as well not only the birth of the child okay there is a deeper meaning it is a it's a new birth for andrew also he is a new person he feels happy that i have done something in life his he has got a clear vision about his life now he has got a goal in his life he feels more responsible about his job and his profession his commitment life so many things it's a new birth see when you imagine the day you come to know what you have to do in life when your goal is clear you will be very happy there is a saying that there are two important days in our life one is the day we were born please remember this not from the lesson okay there are two important days in our life one the day we were born second the day we come to know why we were born that means the purpose of our life okay so one is a physical birth and the other is your psychological birth so andrew comes to know yes i have a great responsibility i can do something in life okay so you can also give your own creative uh, interpretation more and more such uh, creative insights are welcome okay hello darshana okay now coming to tale of penance city yeah, i missed that thank you dear students for reminding me the last uh, lesson in our uh, supplementary text is tale of penance city it's not um, uh, you know it's a poem okay it's not a short story or a novel it's a poem it is basically a satire remember the first topic you need to learn in the tale of penance city is how is it an example of satire satire why is that lesson or that poem a very powerful satire s a t i r e satire means it's a social criticism or a political criticism it makes fun of a king and his uh, foolish subjects the foolish king also so how do you uh, explain that second important point is examples of humor and irony in the poem please do not take tale of melon city for granted okay you might have enjoyed the poem very funny and all that but don't think it's easier when it comes to answering questions from the poem so be prepared what are the examples of humor and irony or how does vikram seth employ humor and irony effectively in the tale of melon city there are examples like where um he says the uh, the people say that the king is dead long live the king see the king is dead long live the king so that's one example of irony as well as humor so like this you can identify examples from the poem and write them okay so this is all about tale of melon city and um, we come to now um hornbill our main textbook yeah we are coming to that hitesh ha <laughs> yes diksha has given a beautiful uh, example the king is described in the poem as just just means somebody who stands for justice okay just means somebody who stands for justice placid means very calm and quiet person but in his uh, behavior he is just the opposite he is neither soft or uh, uh, placid nor does he support uh, uh, fairness or justice ha huh, correct darshana is also giving an example for humor there is an idiot who passed by the city gate and he is deciding uh, the next person to uh, take over that's a melon the next king. yeah good so you i know that you have now got enough uh, motivation to look for examples for humor and irony that is the purpose of this live session just to kindle that interest and make you look for uh, collecting relevant points from the text dear students that's a beautiful 
response from all of you. Now we come to Hornbill textbook. Get ready. Hornbill. All set? Okay. We start with the portrait of a lady. In between, let me also tell you, on my YouTube channel, there is a, a complete series, you can say, of talks by me on almost all the important lessons in uh, Jaspir sir, good evening, um, in class uh, 11th and 12th. Okay, class 11th and 12th lesson. So you can check with the title of your lesson or if you just type insights with uh, Kana or Santosh Kana, you will get the list of uh, lessons and talks. And those talks, Insights with Kana's series, they will help you understand the lessons from a deeper level. Like how do you connect your learning of a lesson with the real life? And this is the purpose of that series of talks. Plus, it will help you in answering long answer questions in the exam. Okay. So please go through those uh, talk series also. You will get uh, very clear insights into many of the lessons, the purpose of studying certain lessons you will come to know. Yeah, Diksha is asking a very good question. How can we score uh, full marks in long question promotion? Yeah, yeah, promotion, promotion, yes, correct. How can we score full marks in long question answers? Yeah, we'll come to that. Uh, after quickly revising our um, hornbill, I will give you some general tips on these kinds of uh, doubts. Thank you, Diksha, kindly wait. The portrait of a lady, the very first lesson in your hornbill textbook. These are the important topics. Description of grandfather. How does Kushwan Singh describe grandfather? Collect points from the text. Second, life and education in the village. Very, very important, very important. How did the grandmother and grandson spend life in the um, village or the rural uh, education and life. What kind of education did the child get there, etc. Third, city life and education and the activities of grandmother in the city. Very important. Fourth point, grandson goes abroad and what happens after he returns? Yes, turning point of their life, yeah. Then final moments of the grandmother. Very important. How does Kushwan Singh describe the Ankit Jain? Uh, how does um, Kushwan Singh describe the last moments of the grandmother? Very touching. It's very important. You should learn this. And grandmothers bond with uh, the sparrows. And in the village with the stray dogs. Basically, she loves animals and nature, all that. Then you get to extract questions. Any part of the lesson, a few lines could be picked up and questions could be asked on that. Character sketch of grandmother, most important question. You should have some qualities of the grandmother ready. One is, she was very kind and uh, religious. Give some examples from the lesson. She was a very spiritual lady also, very strong lady. That is why even though in the city house she was um, feeling lonely, she never complained about it. Okay, she accepted her life the way it is. That's a very good quality. Uh, can you make a video on advertisement post? Uh, that would be... I'll try. It would be too late, I think. She uh, Birds daily. Correct, Ishika. Very good. Diksha, emotionally, she, uh, grandmother is very strong. Uh, grandfather's description, she was writing there. Yes, she wore uh, loose-fitting clothes. He wore, uh, uh, he had a long white beard and etc, etc. Yes, it was the... Kya hal chal? <laughs> Good, yes. Somebody, yeah. And then coming to our next lesson, a photograph. That is a poem. There are three stanzas in the poem. And each stanza is about a stage in the life of the mother and the daughter. Remember it like this. What happens in each stage? Okay. And important word meanings of the words given in the poem, a photograph. Next is 
what uh, meaning will you give to each of the ending lines of each stanza very important in photograph if you the three stanzas the ending lines of each stanza could be asked for extract very important for example the very first stanza ends with the line and um, it ends with the line the and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet that could be asked similarly second stanza ends with the line both rhy with the labored ease of loss or something like that okay so please pick up these lines especially learn the deeper meaning also coming to the next uh, important lesson we are not afraid to die if we can all be together it's a very uh, eventful lesson you can say because they are on a voyage uh, there one of the methods you should adopt is please prepare today itself if you have not done it earlier date wise events in the lesson yeah i can say what about it silent silences in photograph yeah in the poem photograph the ending line is it silent silences uh koi dar kar dar ki zarurat nahi hai yash that is why we are doing this you still have time to prepare please focus on the points i have given and um, give your best okay when you have a lot of fear you will not have clarity so please don't okay yeah yeah there is time but so so i told you important events in the lesson we are not afraid today date wise what happened on christmas day on new year day january 2nd what happened this you should prepare and study otherwise that lesson is going to be difficult <laughs> no fear when <laughs> yeah we have prepared well good good next is way walker the ship how is it described in the lesson important third one who are the crew men and how did they help during the crisis important next the positive attitude of the children yeah february is 29 days correct um, positive attitude of children very important question you have many examples in the story how they behaved in times of extreme crisis and stress next the description of the island they reached that is isle amsterdam the french scientific base important then what are the life skills you can learn from this lesson important then extract questions okay important characters in the lesson what each character did in making their uh, voyage successful next is the poem the laburnum top laburnum top is a beautiful poem brilliant poem by ted hughes word meanings you have to study there meaning of each line as i told you that's the best way you can prepare poem for exam um ah uh, daro mat ya correct uh, meaning of each line figures of speech used in the poem metaphor of uh, the engine and the machine and the fuel that's the major uh point of the whole poem the core idea in the poem mr and mrs crow <laughs> ikram you have read my uh, article published in the newspaper wonderful questions in the textbook given based on the poem and then extract questions this is all about laburnum top coming to the next uh, one is the voice of the rain the poem summary of the poem you have to study how water cycle is described by walt whitman then how he connects this this water cycle to creative cycle that happens on the last two lines which have been bracketed yeah okay diksha i skipped this discovering that i will discover it now yeah after this <laughs> word meanings then message in the poem the voice of the rain now we come to discovering tut the egyptian mummy many students find oh my god what should i study here what are the topics i need to cover come on listen relax first important topic write down three important studies on tut's mummy 1 2 3 first the person who discovered it what all he did you have to make a list of it second the person who did x-ray of the mummy 
and what all he did, what discoveries he made, etc. Third one, the latest as per the text, that is, um, Zahi Hawas, CT scan, and what did he discover? These are the three important things you should know by heart. Then comes archaeology. How archaeology as a field of study has changed from the past to the present. Very, very, very important. Business notability of the discovery to the sun. And that is what I am discussing, Hitesh, now. The three important studies, okay? Then Egyptian beliefs and the curse of the pharaoh. Very, very, very important. What do Egyptians believe about disturbing the pharaoh, I mean the mummy? What will happen if anybody does that? And what are their beliefs? Important. Next comes another major area in the topic, I mean in the lesson, Egyptian mummy project. What is Egyptian mummy project? And what is its purpose? It's very clearly given in the text. Okay. Yeah. Then CT scan and X-ray. How do you compare the two? What advantage CT scan has over X-ray? It's given in the text. What is the full form of CT scan? Everything is given there. Another important one is the family line of Tut. Who was Tut's father, grandfather and what each one of them did. Very clear explanation is given in the text. You can prepare a family tree and learn it. Make a character's name there and what he or she did in their lifetime. Okay. It's clearly given in the text. You just have to note it down and learn. Correct. CT scan is computed tomograph. What was the result of CT scan? It is not clearly mentioned. Uh, ah, that is true. It is like uh, Zahi Haba says that he could find the most uh, certain parts uh, missing in the body. You will find uh, Diksha when you read that CT scan. It not only comes towards the end of the lesson, but in the beginning also. So you have to collect the points for CT scan study by Zahi Havas from all over the text because it is, uh, it's also starting with the present then goes to the past like this. So please check that. And the anatomy professor's name is not mentioned in the text, but you will find it on Google. Please get it. I have discussed it in the class. You find out now what it is. Okay, what is the name of the anatomy professor? Okay. What is the next lesson? Come on, first tell me. Next lesson, fast. Next lesson after discovering that and um, yes, depend on the students. Explain the questions of the chapter as it in the class. Okay, what is the difference between medical technology and archaeology? This is an important question. Yes, correct, correct. Childhood. Next is childhood poem. Cute poem. Childhood. Okay. Childhood, first you will find um, there is one thing common about all the stanzas of uh, childhood. It is, when did my childhood go? So, one question, a few assumptions in stanza one. Second stanza also, when did my childhood go? Some assumptions. So, we have prepared that in the class. Learn it like that. What are the assumptions made by the person? And third one, when did my childhood go? Again, some assumptions. Last part of it is different. Where did my childhood go? Mera bachpan kahan gaya? Okay. Kahin nahi gaya hai. Woh hamare andar hi hai. It is within us. That child is within all of us. How do we find that child? When we look at another child. When we look at the face of a baby, the child in us wakes up. Or our childhood comes back immediately. Never lose that child in you. Okay. What is one good quality about children? They are very curious about nature, everything around them. As we grow up, we somehow switch off our mind to most of the wonders of life. That shouldn't happen. Okay. So in the poem Childhood, you have to learn very important. What are the questions and assumptions? And which quality is associated with the, each stanza? Rationalism, uh, the ability to see hypocrisy, and then uh, individuality. That's, you will find it in the textbook itself. It is mentioned there. 
you have to study that okay what are the qualities uh, mentioned in the text we have the adventure the adventure is uh, considered as a very interesting challenging lesson and tough also by a few students but please learn it like this one important question from adventure is how did rajendra explain the special or the strange experience of professor gaitonde you study this first based on two theories it's given in the text exactly you need to learn those points how does rajendra explain the strange experience of the professor okay most important long answer question second important thing what happened at azad maidan the whole incident at azad maidan learn it from the text one after the other what happened there third important one what did professor gaithonde see when he was transported to the parallel world what were the sights seen by him yes ayush thank you i'm good how are you okay so what were the sights like he goes to bombay what are the sights he finds which are not of modern times okay the british times these are the points you need to collect now comes the difficult part some of you find is how is history in the parallel world and how is history in the present world the third battle of panipat my dear students if you learn this much adventure is very very easy you will love adventure i mean the lesson okay okay <laughs> then we come to the next lesson silk road i hope i have not skipped any lesson again hmm? diksha did i skip any lesson no okay silk road is a, as i told you it's a travel log it is mainly a, about the pilgrimage the kora to mount kailash what do you need to learn here the progress of the journey from the beginning till the end of the lesson what happened at every stage of the journey of the writer please prepare this just like in we are not afraid to die here you need to know step by step incidents described in the lesson first important topic second important topic is <laughs> okay okay second important topic is description of the places in the lesson please pay special attention to this like darchan hor lake mansarovar very clearly the writer has explained each place learn those points and learn those particular words used by him also coming to another important area in silk road the writers meeting with norbu n o r b u how did he meet norbu who is norbu the description is given in the text what does he do and there is a beautiful line which could be asked for exam in a short answer question or extract question he says uh, we are two scholars who have escaped from the library why some reasons you have to give one more is my positive thinking strategy was working after all there is a line about positive thinking strategy given in the text what does that mean see when you are going to a place suppose you are going to a, a new place and you don't have any contacts there you are going there but you have a feeling somewhere that everything will happen for good or even if i don't have anybody there somebody will come to help me you trust the universe you become so positive that you expect some miracles always on your way this is the positive thinking strategy so when he was going to mount kailash the writer at darchan he fell sick and uh, he thought that he won't be able to go to mount kailash and going alone would be a very tough task so he he also came to know that it is not the season so he was thinking my positive thinking strategy would fail here 
because there is no one to accompany him. But suddenly he comes in contact with Norbu and he is also a person who is going to Mount Kailash. Not only a, just a pilgrim or a traveler, he is also a great scholar. So the writer feels that at last I found a companion, not just a companion, somebody who has my own match my wavelength. Okay. Then he says, now I'm happy that my positive thinking strategy is working. Okay, this is how the lesson ends. And please remember the importance of the title. What is Silk Road? If you get a question, where is it? What is the total stretch? How many kilometers? Why is it called Silk Road? That explanation is given in the text. And there is also a breed of dog mentioned. Very important. Tibetan Mastiff. Please collect points for that. Tibetan Mastiff. So these are the topics we need to focus on. Um, and then a few questions that some of you dropped in between. One is how to write long answer questions effectively. Okay. See, when you answer long answer questions, Again, I tell you, plan the answer, how many paragraphs your answer should have. Two or three maximum. It depends on the kind of points that you have. Uh, just for example, you get a question in the exam. What happened on both the visits of the narrator to Mrs. Dorling's house? If this is the question, you understand that. Yeah, here I have to write about two visits paid by the writer to the address. So two important paragraphs your answer should have. One para, you will write about the first visit, what all happened. Second para, second visit, what all happened. Your answer is very clear and you will never miss a point. We are not afraid to die. What happened on, on each day of the journey? You already have date-wise list. Write it down in that order. Okay, if it's a character sketch that is asked, give an intro paragraph, brief one about that character, then start giving one quality, underline, give an example. Another quality, give an example. Like this, four to five qualities you can give for the character, wind up. If there is a comparative study, suppose a question is asked, how do you compare the characters of uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald and uh, Mrs. Pearson, right? One paragraph about Mrs. Fitzgerald, another about Mrs. Pearson. Third paragraph, you do a comparison and contrast of both characters. So see, planning, it should start from here. So your clarity will be there. Your expression will also be very good. Okay. <laughs> and coming to uh, how to... Devote your time in the examination, time management. Please follow these tips. You are given 15 minutes reading time. 15 minutes reading time. 3 hours writing time. So 3 hours, 15 minutes you are getting. 15 minutes reading time. As soon as you get the question paper, just see whether it is class 11th question paper or not. <laughs> okay. Whether it is English question paper or not. See whether all the pages are there. Okay. Quickly. Then. In the 15 minutes reading time, start reading literature first, reading literature section and try to prepare all the points, value points, mark the choice of questions that you are going to answer. Okay, MCQ, which are the answers in your mind? All that you prepare, this would take 10 minutes. Maximum 10 minutes it would take. Still you have five more minutes remaining. What will you do in those five minutes? Do the uh, same thing for section B, grammar and other advertisement, etc. Prepare all the points. Keep them ready. Okay. Keep them ready. The points in section B. Enough. 15 minutes is done. Don't read section A then and uh, get confused. When writing time starts, start with the literature. Start with literature. So maximum 40 minutes you may take for literature. 40 to 45 minutes, all of you will be able to complete literature section. Immediately after that, you can start doing section B. 
<laughs> Correct. Uh, section B you do after that. Section B, you see, classified ad, one question. Maximum you can take five minutes. Poster, let's say five minutes, 10 minutes. Over. Now, one uh, debate, one speech. Both questions each, uh, together you can take 20 minutes, 10 for each minute. B plus uh, 10, half an hour you can take for section B. Worst case, let us say, sir, grammar also we need to think, we need more time. Take 45 minutes for section B or 40 minutes for section B. So 45 minutes for literature, 45 minutes for uh, section B, still you have more than one hour for section A. Nearly one and a half hours or two hours you have. See how easy it is. So 45 minutes, then 15 minutes uh, there, 45 minutes. Suppose nine o'clock you're starting, they come, suppose. By 9.45 literature is over, then by 10.30 your um, uh, section B will be over. So you have more than, uh, yeah, one and a half hours you have for section A. Section A. Thank you, Akshat. Uh, I'm so, so happy to get that comment. Thank you, Beta. This is for all of you. Okay. Section A, when you do, you can either do both the passages for uh, comprehension first and then do note making or you do note making first and then do other one. Note making when you are doing, please remember the format. Do not change. Don't write X, Y, Z and all. One subheading. Under that, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, like this points. Second subheading, 2, the subheading, 2.1, 2.2 series. This way you have to prepare. And abbreviations you have to expand in a box. Then write summary. When you write summary, take the most important points of each subheading and the points under that. Uh, write that, put them together. And uh, uh, it will be very easy for you to summarize the passage okay so you should get full marks in note making please target like that do not say that the paper is lengthy i'm uh, i'm taking more time it is just because you are giving unwanted time to certain questions have this planning and you will be able to finish the paper at least five to ten minutes before the uh, closure okay you will get five to ten minutes extra to read your own answers but please start it with the reading time effectively. You should not waste your reading time in any other activity. Read and plan questions and then start with literature, section B then, then section A, C, B, A order you can complete. Okay, and uh, on the previous uh, night of the examination, do not sit late and study. Go to bed early, get up early and uh, go for the exam, prepare well. Okay. If you sit late night and study and next morning if you have to go for exam, you may forget everything. You may feel tired in the examination hall. Okay, I hope uh, you're all doing well. Take very good care of yourself. Convey my sincere regards to your parents and to your teachers. Okay, Take good care. I hope you found this YouTube live session useful. Wish you all the best. Good night. Thank you for joining and giving excellent response. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this video will be there in the uh, on the channel. The recorded version of it will be available. You can anytime watch it in case you have missed some parts of it. Okay. Thank you to each one of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do not waste your time. Focus completely on the paper. Grab maximum marks. Okay. Write the best answers. Enjoy each and every moment that we had in the classroom. Remember it. Let it be your motivation. And don't forget to watch the Insights series talks. With that, once again, good night. Yes, my best wishes and blessings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it.